welcome back to another episode of Catfish Combat with Joel. It is a blustering day the Lord has made today. We're in uh, mid-December. Sorry, I'm yelling at you, but the wind is just howling right now. So we're in mid-December. Uh, it, it's going to be a tough day to fish. I've only got a couple spots I can fish because of the wind and the current. We've had about a week, week and a half straight of rain. It's just been brutal weather. Um, it's not too cold yet. It's going to come real cold here in the next week or so. But uh, yeah, I'm trying to get out here, get a couple hours of fishing in. It is about almost four o'clock. Um, so weather conditions, so it's cloudy, you can see very overcast day, that, oh, yachts, that's going to be some chop when that thing hits me. All right, so uh, high today is about 55, I think it's about 52 right now, wind is just whipping out of the southeast about 15, 20 miles an hour. The, the current is ripping too, you guys can see that, it is moving, they're cranking water at the dam right now. So what I'm doing is I'm setting up on a finger, oh, water temperature is about 54 degrees on the main river. Yeah, that yacht is coming in hot. Oh, that's gonna hurt. All right, so it's about 54 degrees on the main river. Uh, I'm fishing areas, basically I'm looking for current breaks. I'm looking for fingers and big areas where um, where there's gonna be current breaks adjacent to deep water. It's an area I've never really fished before. I've driven by it many times. Uh, today's an ideal kind of day to fish here. Uh, if you guys can see, where there's a finger right there. You guys can see I'm kind of on the current seam and I'm sitting in about 32 feet of water. Most of what's behind me is about 30 to 40 feet. There's a bunch of trees and laydowns back there. So uh, here comes the waves, man. I'm gonna get low. My boat does not like waves. All right, so uh, yeah, we're gonna give that a try. I've got all gizzard shad today. So yeah, we're gonna see what happens here. All right guys, let's talk bait today. Oh man, I survived that rocking. I probably could have made a diamond. That Yeah, if you own a yacht, slow down when you're going by you know small fishing boats and kayaks your your wake is a lot bigger than you think it is when it hits us i to get in the middle of the boat and get low <laughs> i almost got rolled all right so i got big shad half smaller shad half uh smaller uh shad kind of body section body section and i got some live ones in the wet in the live well i got like five or six gizzard shad and i got actually got a one of those uh small sucker mouth carp like a live one and i got a live shiner in there as well that i caught my cast net so I'll throw those out there too and see what happens all right guys for rod five i'm gonna throw a gizzard shad out here a live one so i just like to basically take where that line where there's silver and kind of gold line is like a little bit of an off color and i just go right through the tail section like that they bleed out real nicely and they flap around a lot so i'm gonna get him out there flapping around that current and see what happens here Let's get him out there. All right. Got a lot of down trees and timber in here. So if there's any catfish hiding, they might come out and slug it. Look at that thing go, man. Wow. All right. All right. So let's talk what we got out here. So on rod one, got shad, uh, shad head. Rod two, we got that live shad. Rod three, we've got, uh, I actually put two gizzard shad, two of the smaller ones on this rig. And then rod four, I've got a uh, shad body section, a smaller one. And then rod five, I've got a uh, big shad half. So yeah, we'll, I can see it. These two are kind of in the current seam right there. These two are kind of on the other side of it. And I'm, I, it's gonna oscillate bad in here. There's not a lot I can do about it. But uh, yeah, we'll see what happens here. Yeah, we got good fish. Yep. I don't think he's huge. I think he just feels a lot bigger because of the current. It's right off the end. There's on a shad head. Kind of a slow grab, but yeah, he came out and grabbed it. It's right off that tree. More in kind of the... Uh... Man, this actually might be a good fish. It's right off that tree. Like he's kind of hanging out right there. Uh, well, this fish has a decent bend. Like I said, I'm withhold, I withhold any judgment. I've learned that for this one. For these conditions where, man, you're just fighting the current. Because everything feels huge in the current. It ends up being like a 10 pound fish. You're like, oh, yeah, okay. Whatever he's fighting pretty good though. 
squirrely. Let's see what we got here. I'll bring him up to the front of the boat. Get him on the current. Let's see. That's a decent blue. 15. It's not a monster, but I'll take it. Come here, you hoo. Yeah. Good way to start the day, I guess. All right. Get in here, you hoos. Get my phone out of the way there. Man, look at the twist. Don't break your jaw, dude. Man, he's angry. All right, I'll let him go. I think I might move. See if I can get more in these trees here. A little bit shallower. I think I'm out too much in the current. All right, let's get another fish. That didn't take long, so I just moved. I just, you can see how I don't have all my rods up. So, yeah, I kind of figured out from that first fish that uh, they're probably in these lay downs and up in these pools here. So, um, so I just shifted down maybe about 100 meters from where I was, just kind of a little bit more out of the current and where I have more access to some of the down trees over here. And I threw it right up there by one of those trees. And sure enough, that was only maybe two minutes or some grabbed him. I think this might be a flathead. He's kind of acting like one. Ah, it's a blue. It's a blue kitty. Not a huge fish. Let's get him in here. Looks like maybe a five. Five, seven pound right here. Yeah, I got him pretty good. I got him hooked. Come here, you. Oh, yeah, he got off. That's fun. Oh, he got the shad too. Look at that. Yeah, free meal. I'll count that one. I got hands on him. That's all right. All right. Well, let's get the rest of the rods out here. Yeah, I was, man, I wasn't even paying attention. Let's get my lights set up for the night. I <laughs> look up and Rod's bent over. <laughs> my bad. He's not real big. He's on a shad head. Yeah, I think I found the spot, man. They're schooled up in here. Yeah, he's not a real big fish. Feels like a smaller blue. He's feisty though. Feisty in that current. Let's see if I can get him in the boat this time. Because I need an eater. And I think that's I think he's gonna be the one. Yes indeed. Let's see, I have him looking pretty good. Yeah, I got him right to the lower left. He'll be good. Pull him up in here, real pale. Come here, you. Perfect eater. It's a good fish. I'll take it. Yeah, he's in the lower lip. I'm gonna get him in the wires. All right, let's get him in the live well. Get in there, you hoos. Right, roll over. Roll over. There we go. Right. Oh, oh, oh. Angry fish. All right, let's get another one. I 
I'm gonna give him time. I've lost this fish over and over and over again. Let's see if I can, he's got it this time. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yep, I got him. Oh, that's a good fish. Yeah, man, he had to think about that one. <laughs> Here, let me turn on my headlamp. Yeah, he had to think about it. Let's get this out of the way here. <laughs> he decided he wanted to peck it. Peck it, and then boom, he just took it. Hope you all can see here. He's not huge, but feels similar to the first one I caught. Got a decent, he's not pulling any drag or anything, but he's got some shoulders on him. So I moved to I moved to a different spot uh, for the night. I can't be moving around too much, but uh, where I ended up. So I'm kind of in a current break. I'm kind of in the other current seam area, and I'm fishing right in front of a down tree. And I've just been getting packed and packed, and finally this guy came out. I knew there's something in there. Let's see what he is. Is it a flatty? Oh, it's a yeah, it's a small flatty. Man, these smaller flatties they feel like big blues when they hit. All right, because I've had bad luck here pulling these flatheads in the boat as of late, I'm going to net him even though he's not very big. Just so I can get him in the boat. Get hands on him here. All right. Want your big brother? Where's he at? Come here, you who's. Yeah, I got him. He's not a huge fish. Not at all. But he's a good flathead. I'll take him. Alrighty. You guys can see him. Alright, let me get the hook out and I'll show you. Get a little gl glamour shot. Alright, pretty fish. It's not real big, probably about five, six pounder. Alright, let's get him back in the water here. Go tell your big brother I got free meals over there. Alright, later buddy. Go get bigger. There he goes. All right, so that's going to wrap us up for this episode of Catfish Combat with, uh, yeah, my doggy. I forgot to show you guys my doggy, Ginger. Hi, Ginger. What's wrong? What's wrong? <laughs> so, yeah, you didn't see her because she was just hanging out under my console the whole time because of the wind. She's, yeah, she's soft as cookie dough, but she's a really good dog. So, anyways, uh, yeah, big lesson from today. So, we're definitely, we're in winter right now. Uh, it's definitely those kind of temperatures, a kind of wind. However, we're getting into that early winter, kind of like hard winter where it gets really cold pattern. Um, so the flatheads are still kind of biting. We're, we're not at that sub 50 degree where the water gets to the low 40s. Typically out here, like the deep of winter gets to be about 41, 42 degrees on the surface. We're still, you know, 54, 55 degrees uh, as far as the water temperature goes. So fish are still a little bit more active. Now today was a challenge for just a couple hours on the water. That wasn't a bad day. I mean, had I had a little bit more time or the, the wind wasn't so bad, I could have explored more, but because I was limited, kind of only a couple of spots I could get to. Uh, just the, the chop, the wind, the current was too bad. Uh, both those spots ended up paying off, but uh, yeah, the fish were not willing to move. They were they were deep up in those log jams. So as long as I was throwing baits along those trees, so I was kind of hopping on the trees on a couple of those fish. Um, there was usually one or two sitting there. There weren't a lot of them schooled up on it um so yeah that's kind of the technique that worked but basically when you get a lot of current like that it's going to force the catfish into structure are they going to be on turns are they going to be deep deep in structure or under log jams uh they they don't want to sit out there and swim and waste energy you know fighting current they want to get out of that and find a place to be comfortable i don't think they're hunting a whole lot um, just because of that current once the storm passes through tomorrow temperature is going to drop once the, they stop cranking water so much at the dam and everything kind of settles down um, it'll probably get a little bit better that I, I, I you know from last year I kind of remember this pattern that every time you get a transition between winter and spring and then going fall to winter You get a lot of rain. It's like two weeks straight of rain here and it just like the rivers flood everything just gets nuts um, When those happen you kind of got to hunker down and just let it be you can fish up in the creek sometimes You know, there's fishing up in there, but if you try on the main river man, it's just bad There's trees debris. It gets real dangerous real hazardous um not super worth it but once that transition occurs like once we get into this kind of settled winter pattern where the temperatures will be in the 40s and 50s and we get rain sporadically we're not flooding a whole lot we'll get into that uh that time where 
you know, the catfish will start to get, find comfortable water, they'll start to school up. It gets a lot easier to find the big ones. Winter is one of my favorite times to catch big blue catfish. So I'm excited for that. Uh, that, that transition will probably happen this week and finish off. So hopefully back half of December into January, we'll start getting some big fish here. But yeah, if you like this kind of content, uh, go ahead and like and subscribe, leave me a comment. And uh, remember, stay on mission for him. If you have any, uh, you know, inkling or question about who him is, it's Jesus, okay? Let's, let's be clear there. Stay on mission for Jesus. Uh, yeah. God bless. Take care. I'll see y'all.